Hello, hello. It is January the 30th and it is time for our Marketplace Daily Devotion. Uh, and so I pray that you're ready, amen, to just come on in. It is a Saturday, so some of you may be working, some of you may be off like I am, and you may have been doing some things around the house, some chores, or or maybe you're just coming in from an errand that you've been running. And so now you want to take out some time just to sit back and chill for a minute, you know, and let's give God uh, some glory for today. Let's give him some praise for today. And so I invite you to come on in. Amen. And let's, amen, have our daily devotion together. So, uh, today I'm off. Uh, like I said, it is Saturday and, um, you know, uh, my husband's birthday is going to be this coming week. And so we actually get, you know, getting an early start by celebrating. And so we just came from a marvelous Saturday lunch with, uh, his two baby son and baby girl. So his, uh, the two, <laughs> uh, two youngest children. And so it was a, a surprise. One of them came from out of town, the baby girl, she came from out of town to surprise him. And so this has been so far a glorious day. And so I am taking time out now just to thank God, you know, um, you know, we need to give God thanks for, for all things and especially those things that are very special like today when um, we surprised him with his baby girl coming to town so ah, it's been a it's been a busy morning yes it has and I am ready for some downtime with you so our devotion today is going to be coming from uh, 1 Peter, the second chapter in the fifth verse. And it's going to be talking about lively stones or living, I'm sorry, living stones, living stones. Uh, and uh, the as we like to do, we always like to start from the, the verse before and read the verse after. So we're going to be starting from verse four. And it says in 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse four, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Amen. So this was a stone that was, it was, it was disallowed by men, you know, it was rejected by men, but God chose it and God has chosen you. It says, ye also as living stone or lively stones are built up in, have built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, hallelujah, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And also because um, the Ezekiel, uh, uh, Ezekiel 36 talks a little bit about this as well. I want to also read a verse from Ezekiel. If we go over to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 26th through the 30th verse, it says, I will give you a new heart, put a new spirit in you, and I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God willed, not self willed. So this is talking about you being a living stone for God. Amen. A living stone for God. And so our uh, story that goes along with this devotion today, it says here, I have a friend who lost his job, a fortune, his wife and his home. This is the story that I'm reading to go with this devotion today. It's talking about a, a, a friend who had a friend that lost everything. Kind of like Job was in the Bible. Remember Job in the Bible when he lost everything? And so this friend, he had a friend that lost his job, his fortune, his wife, and his home. But he tenaciously held to his faith in Christ. The only thing he had left was that. That was the only thing he had left was his faith. 
Like Job in the Old Testament, he would not abandon God no matter what happened. And yet, like Job, he couldn't help but wonder why. Sometimes, you know, we go through hard things in life. And sometimes, you know, we wonder, why God? Why did this happen to me? You know, I, I keep doing everything that I know to do and things, bad things keep happening. Why? Sometimes we ask God those hard questions. But it says here that one day he stopped to watch some men doing stonework on a huge church. One of them was chiseling a triangular piece of stone. What are you doing? Or what are you going to do with that? Asked my friend. The workman said, See that little opening way up there in the huge church? One of them was chiseling a, a, a triangular piece of stone. I'm sorry. And he said, what are you going to do with that? Asked my friend. And the workman said, see that little opening away up there nearby the spire. I lost my place there for a minute. But this is what the one uh, asked him, his friend asked the one that was chiseling. He said, well, I'm shaping this down here so that it will fit up there. Tears filled my friend's eyes as he walked away. For it seemed that God had spoken through the workman to explain the ordeal through which he was passing. I'm shaping you down here so that you will fit up there. <laughs> Sometimes the things that we're going through, we don't understand why, but God is using those things to shape us down here so we'll be ready to fit in the kingdom of God up there. It's more important that we, we do what we need to do here so that we can be ready when he calls for us to go there. Amen. It's more important where we spend eternity, not here. So Ezekiel says, I'll give you a new heart. The Lord says in Ezekiel, I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll remove that stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God willed and not self willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my command. See, God is chiseling away at that stony heart, at that rough heart, at that heart that's not filled with compassion. But that hard heart, the cares of life has made it hard. Where you don't want to let anybody in, nothing in. You're so rough, so tough. Because you're hurting from all the pain. But God wants to take that heart. And he wants to give you a heart of flesh. It says, I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my command. You'll once again live in the land I gave your ancestors. You'll be my people and I'll be your God. I'll put you out of that stinking pollution. I'll give personal orders to the wheat fields, telling them to grow bumper crops, crops and I'll send no more famines. God wants to replace that heart that you have, that heart heart, and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. And so become that living stone that God wants you to be. Let him change you. Let him, amen, love on you and mold you and, and make you the way he wants you to be so that you can be a living stone here on earth and be fit for the master's use when time for you to go to heaven. So the thought for today is, I will focus on you, Lord, when I'm left confused and wondering why I will trust that there is purpose in my pain 
and that my circumstances are causing me to look a little more like you. Amen. Amen. The things that we're going through in life. Amen. The Bible says, uh, count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations. Amen. For they are working for the trials of our faith is working, is, is working, is, is working out the patience and endurance in us. So God can make us fit for the master's use. So when we're being confused and troubled, <laughs> ah, let God chisel away. Okay. Let him chisel away. <sighs> Just say, chisel me, God. Chisel away at me, Lord. Cut everything out that's not like you. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Take away the pain and the anger and the anguish that's been built up. Some of us, it's been built up from birth, from a childhood when your parents told you you wasn't going to be anything, told you you was no good. Our self-esteem was just walked on and crushed. But let God build you up. Let him chisel away at that hard heart so he can pull out the beauty that is in you. He can pull out and give you beauty for ashes, joy for mourning. Mm, my God, hallelujah, Jesus, a living stone. And so I hope this devotion today has helped you. I hope that you will continue to share, like, and, and subscribe on my YouTube channel. Amen. So that you can pass these along to someone that may be hurting, someone that may need to know Jesus. So Father God, I thank you today for those that are listening, those that are, are, are just in a place, God, where they're hurting and they need you. I pray, Father God, that you will touch their hearts, touch their minds. As they allow you to chisel away at them, that you would give them the courage that they need. God, you said, be not weary in well-doing. For if we, if we don't faint, God, we will reap in due season. God, let them know that if they don't stop, if they don't faint, if they keep on pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling and allowing you to chisel away at that stony heart, being transformed by the renewing of their minds. Father God, I thank you that you would transform them and make them to be the honored vessel that you would have them to be fit for the master's use. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you so much. This is Lady Trice saying God bless you and have the rest of your Saturday. May it be filled with joy, relaxation, and fun. Bye-bye.